So how can the Sony HX400V save your life? By giving you an incredible 50 times optical zoom so you don't have to be this damn close to this lion. The Sony HX400V was released in 2014, but has been discontinued for quite some time. So why am I just releasing a video on it now? Are you crazy? Or just plain stupid? Yes, the camera is a few years old and discontinued, but just because it's old doesn't mean it may not be good. Besides, a powerful zoom never gets old. A camera with a similar zoom, the Panasonic FC80, which I reviewed, we're going to be comparing these two cameras. But unlike the Panasonic, the Carl Zeiss lens found on the Sony with more professional controls and features produces results that, well, may surprise you for a small sensor camera. The impressive zoom is enhanced with Sony's sophisticated steady shot system. And that stabilization allows you to get clear shots of objects that, wow, you couldn't barely see with your naked eye. And if that's not enough, Sony has something called a clear image zoom in the camera, which is actually supposed to produce results better than a digital zoom. So we're going to turn that on in the camera and test that. So here's a shot at 50 times 1200 millimeters equivalent full optical zoom. And now with the clear image zoom, you can go in increments. Here it is at 66 times, starting to get a little noisy. And by the time you get to 100 times, it's getting kind of ugly. So I would say thumbs down and just stick with the optical zoom. Now, in addition to faraway objects, this camera also can get real up close and personal with only a one centimeter focus distance, so you can get some really nice macro shots. It's a very versatile camera, near and far. Sony managed to cram 20 megapixels into the small sensor camera, and you know what? It shows up in details from far and close. Even in low light, it's not bad, which we'll get to. Colors are nice and vibrant, and if you get close enough to your subject, you can get background blur. There's also a nice tilting rear screen, which is great for photography, unlike the FC80, which has a fixed rear screen, which is inconvenient. Now, granted, the resolution of the rear screen is not even a million dots, which is low by today's standards, and it's difficult to see in bright sunlight. And if you're struggling with the screen, you can always use the electronic viewfinder. Many of us prefer using a viewfinder as opposed to an LCD screen. What I am finding to be troubling with this camera is it's nice that it has the electronic viewfinder, but it's still kind of small and not that bright. And even using it, even in sunlight, is difficult. But to Sony's credit, they did include it while many similar cameras don't even have one. There's a dedicated movie record button right on the back. The FC80 records in 4K, but the Sony only records in two versions of HD, the older AVC HD and the newer MP4, except the MP4 is not full HD. If you want the full HD, you'll have to use the AVC HD format. Just make sure your computer is compatible with that. So you're going to see footage of the New York City Marathon taken with this camera over 20 floors up in HD. Can this 50 times zoom camera really catch in on the faces of the runners of the famous New York City Marathon? We're going to find out. Now actually the tripod I had was kind of cheap so I found it easier just to hand hold this and it is a little shaky especially when you are full zoomed and you have all this motion so realize this is worst case scenario but you can see the zoom really was tight enough to get you the name tags of the runners and really to get in close on the action and again we're over 20 stories up here. We're also going to take some footage of the marathon with this big boy the Nikon P1000 reviewed in another video just to see how it compares. Look how fast they are running. These guys are motoring. motoring. 
just a word to the wise, and I'm guilty of it too, this need to always feel you need to shoot at the full zoom at the 50 times just to take it to the limit. Sometimes it's better, oftentimes it's better not to go to the full 50, because first of all, you're too tight, it's shakier, it's harder to get the focus. And clearly, pun intended, one of the drawbacks with this older camera is the older autofocus system. And you can see it does struggle at full zoom, even here in the middle of the day. Sometimes it takes a while just to kick in like it did right here. Some of you may be curious if the lens is parfocal, meaning will it keep its focus from the wide end right through to the telephoto range. And you could see it loses focus a little bit in the middle there, but for the most part, I would say yes it is. Go fish. Now many people dismiss the camera because of its cell phone size sensor, but you have to realize that the large glass and the great Zeiss lens does counteract some of that. In addition to the circuitry that Sony offers with their Bions processor and the 20 megapixels are a true 20 megapixels, those high megapixel count in cell phones most of the time is pixel binning. And even though cell phone manufacturers claim they have a ridiculous zoom in their cell phone cameras, and don't let that fool you because those 100 and 200 times zooms on your cell phone camera is really a digital zoom. The HX400V gives you a true optical zoom for a much better end result. Of course, you could always use binoculars to get close like this guy is doing but we have the HX400V, so we can zero in on this woman who's actually liking this video. So I'd appreciate it if you would do the same. It really would help the channel. Just keep in mind when you're zoomed in this tight, even a shutter speed at 1 250th, which you'd think is pretty fast, you can still see motion blur. So you really gotta keep your shutter speed high. Except if there's not a lot of movement like here, this car was stationary, the shot looks fine. But how do the images compare to the Panasonic FC80, which I reviewed, which also has a 1200 millimeter zoom and a small sensor. So we're gonna compare both cameras in the park right now. I'm gonna show you both wide angle, full zoom and shots in between so you can compare. Here is the HX400V. You can see it did miss in terms of focus on a couple of the shots. Now you're gonna see some shots from the Panasonic FC80. One thing I did notice, you can see the colors seem less saturated. Also seem to miss focus a bit more. When comparing the Panasonic and Sony side by side, here the Sony looks nice and crisp and poppy, whereas here the Panasonic looks a little paler. Color's not as saturated. Whereas the Sony looks pretty good in this image here, the Panasonic looks a little flatter. It looks like the focus missed a little more. Just like a duller image is the feeling I got comparing the two. Again, here's the Panasonic, looks a little soft. Uh, the Sony looks crisper here, looks more contrasty, just an overall more pleasing image in the zoom on these geese. Now also when focusing on these plants, here's the Sony, a very nice looking image. And the Panasonic looks like it just didn't get the focus just right. Again, it looks like it just missed it. There's something not right. Whereas the Sony, again, looks crisper with better contrast. The Sony small size makes it suitable for everyday photography, travel, special event, street photography, because it's so light and easy to carry around. This shot was through a window and it still looks good. Now clearly its small sensor is going to give it a disadvantage in low light, but Sony claims that it's good in low light. The ISO will go up to 3200, but you could also set a maximum if you don't want it to go that high to minimize the grain. But I found that the ISO is really not that bad, even at the high amounts. You can see here from this test, as the ISO is going up, yes, the image is softening a bit, but it's not getting horribly grainy. And here it is at its max. Sony's sophisticated circuitry, including its Bions processor, is helping keep the noise down. Okay, here we are in Greenpoint, Brooklyn on a Halloween night photo shoot. So we're gonna see how good the camera can do in low light situations with the zoom. And let's see how the audio is. Let's go inside and take a look. This was a really creepy photo shoot sponsored by Adorama Photo. They had actors and professional lighting and very sophisticated set set up. And I thought it would be the perfect way to showcase if the XH400V really is scary good. And 
just about everyone at this thing had real sophisticated full frame cameras. I think I was the only one with a cheap point and shoot. Let's get on with the bloody show. I brought an RX-10 Mark IV to the event too to see how the imagery would compare with the HX-400V. The 400V also comes with a built-in flash, perfect for a scary night like this. So here are some of the images with the built-in flash even revealing more detail. Speaking of flash, one of the more useful scene modes in the camera called Night Portrait uses a slower shutter speed to illuminate the background in a night portrait. So instead of a picture like this, you see something like this, which is very cool. This camera isn't designed for high speed action, but it does have a burst mode and you can shoot up to 10 frames per second. But here is where you really can see the older technology come into play. You basically have to sit around twiddling your thumb while the camera processes all the images. It's really slow. Speaking of slow, the autofocus is a contrast-based system, which is an older technology again. There's only three focus modes, center, flexible, spot, and wide. But it does have a lock-on feature, which I will demonstrate on my non-paid subject. When you hit the center button to lock on to your subject, a box will appear around him or her or it, and it will follow the object. Now the box will turn green when it senses a person. Right now it has not sensed a person yet, but there it goes. It actually senses an individual and it will set the exposure and focus accordingly. And as long as your subject doesn't move too fast, it works fairly well. This feature is for photo, not video. And a feature that will really be applauded by a lot of people is the built-in GPS, which actually will tag your photos with your coordinates. This feature was dropped from so many cameras for some reason. In order to get GPS nowadays, you need to have your cell phone with you and transfer your photos over, which is very unreliable. I tested this feature and sure enough, the coordinates were embedded in the photo. So the Sony HX400V zoom can be really tempting for some to make you a little pervy, but I don't recommend this. I recommend you using it for wildlife or to film mature people like fishermen. Hey, you made it this far, so I got a little joke for you. Why do geese cross the road? Well, to get to the other side, right? But will these get to the other side? Whoa! That could have been an ugly scene, all captured with the HX400V in HD. Now, I think these geese saw what happened to the other ones, so they looked like they were a little more cautious. Watch what happens here. They're trying to make a go for it, uh, but they see the oncoming traffic, and yeah. No, don't. They're smart. They're like, no. No, you know what? We're not gonna do it. Stabilization. So if you're looking for a real inexpensive super zoom and you don't mind the trade-offs that this camera has, like the slow aperture, the small sensor, the not great EVF and the lack of 4K, if you're mainly gonna be shooting in sunny conditions, and you really want a nice, long, super zoom that you can hold comfortably in your hand with a Carl Zeiss lens and a few nice manual controls like manual focus, a nice dedicated switch for that. This camera really might be an option if you don't mind buying it second hand. Just make sure you buy it from a reputable seller, check online, see what's available. Or maybe you already own this camera and just wanted to get a little more information about it. Regardless, the GPS, the long zoom, the really great lens, the built-in flash, the stabilization, the tilting screen, and all in a really lightweight and inexpensive package is kind of compelling. I hope you got something out of this video, you learned something. Stay tuned for more Super Zoom reviews. And I'll see you in the next video.